Hello and welcome everyone. This is Minu at Angolink. Today I'm going to review all the English tenses with you. As you will remember, in our first nine lessons in the series Learn the English Tenses, each time we took two or three different tenses and looked at the formulation and usage of those in detail. Today we are going to take all the tenses and review the usage of each one of them. At the end of this lesson, there will be a link to another video where I have prepared some exercises for you. These exercises are going to be quite challenging, but also a lot of fun, where you will have to choose the correct tense among all the tenses that you will review with me in this lesson. Today's prize draw is a free copy of Anglophile 105, which is indeed a review of mixed tenses plus extra exercises. To enter the prize draw, all you need to do is to make a comment in the section below. So, when you're ready, we can begin with our review of all the English tenses. All English tenses As you know, I have explained the different English tenses to you in my nine videos on tenses. In each video, we have looked at the formulation and usage in detail. In this lesson, we're going to summarize and review the usage of all these tenses together. So, just to remind you, in the first video, we looked at the difference between I do and I'm doing. Then, we looked at the difference between I'm doing and I have been doing. In the third video, we looked at I have been doing and I have done. And then we moved on to the difference between I have done and I did. In my fifth lesson, we looked at action verbs and state verbs. The sixth video was on future tenses. We looked at the difference between I will do and I am going to do. And in the following video, we looked at the difference between I am going to do and I am doing with a future time marker. In the eighth video, we looked at all the past tenses. I was doing, I had done, and I had been doing. And finally, we looked at all the future tenses. I will be doing, I will have done, and I will have been doing. So, let's start our revision by looking at present simple. I do, he does, etc. As you will remember, the present simple tense indicates a fact, a habit, or a regular action. Let's look at some examples. A fact. She's an author. She writes books. A habit. She always writes in the morning. And a regular action. She writes two books a year. Let's now look at present continuous. I'm doing, she's doing, we're doing, etc. As you will remember, the present continuous talks about a temporary action in progress at present. She is currently writing a new book. Let's look at the timeline. The action is happening now. OK, moving on, the next tense we looked at was present perfect continuous. I've been doing, she's been doing, etc. As you will remember, this is about an action that has already started and is still going on. Let's look at the timeline and the example together. She has been writing books for over 20 years. You can also use the word since with this tense. For example, since she was 18. She has been writing books 
since she was 18. Okay, from present perfect continuous, we moved on to present perfect. I have done, she has done, etc. Now, you have to be careful with present perfect, whether you're using it with an action verb or a state verb. Let's look at the usage of the present perfect tense with an action verb. When you use this tense with an action verb, like sit, go, come, dance, etc., it indicates a completed action, but there is no time specified in the past. The following expressions require this tense, because they do not refer to a specific time in the past. They mean some time in the past until now. So far. Already. Not yet. Recently. Just. Ever. Never. Today until now. This year until now. In the last few years. In the past week. For example, she has already written 40 books. Let's look at the timeline. The action is completed without saying exactly when. It's completed before now, which is the time of speaking. Now, looking at the present perfect tense with state verbs, it's completely different. Remember that a state verb doesn't take a continuous tense. So, with a state verb, the present perfect has replaced the present perfect continuous. Which means that, with state verbs, the present perfect shows a state that continues from the past to the present. For example, she has been a writer for 15 years, because we can't say she has been being a writer for 15 years. Or, I have known her since 2010. Again, because no is a state verb and we cannot put it in the present perfect continuous tense. So we switch it back to the present perfect simple. I have known. But the timeline will look exactly like the present perfect continuous tense. A state that started in the past and continued and is still correct at the present moment. Right, moving on to the past simple. I did, she did, etc. Remember that initially we contrasted past simple with present perfect. Because past simple is also a completed action, but at a specified time in the past. Any time expression that refers to a specific time in the past requires this tense. For example, yesterday, last year, a week ago, when I was young. For example, she wrote that novel many years ago. Let's look at the timeline. She wrote that novel many years ago, or yesterday, or two weeks ago, or when I was 10. You have a specified time in the past. Okay, moving on now to past continuous. I was doing, we were doing, etc. As you will remember, this is an action in progress in the past, either when a shorter action took place or at a very precise moment. Let's look at the timeline. She was writing that novel when she became ill. The next tense we looked at was the past perfect. I had done, we had done, etc. And as you will remember, that was about a completed action in the past, either before another action took place 
or before a very precise moment. Let's look at the timeline. She had written that novel before she became ill. Okay, moving on to the next tense, which was past perfect continuous. I had been doing, we had been doing, etc. And as you remember, this is an action that had started, continued for some time, and was still in progress in the past. Either before another action, or before a very precise moment. Let's look at the timeline. She had been writing that novel for a few months when she became ill. Okay, moving on to future tenses now and starting with future simple. As you will remember, there are two main usages. The first one is a decision at the time of speaking, and this is used mainly in dialogues, and it's best to use the contracted form. For example, someone says, Dan called earlier, he wants you to call him back. Reacting to this sentence, the listener will say, OK, I'll call him as soon as I can. The second usage was for a possibility in the future, and usually you need to include an expression of possibility in your sentence. For example, I will probably call him this afternoon. From future simple, we moved on to the going to form. I'm going to do, she's going to do, etc. And as you will remember, there are also two usages. The first one is an action in the future that has already been planned by the speaker. For example, I'm going to call Dan after lunch. The speaker has already decided what he or she is going to do. This form is also used for something that is certain to happen in the near future. I know he's going to invite me out. The speaker is sure that this action is going to happen. Right, then we contrasted going to with present continuous with a future time marker. I am doing something tomorrow. She's doing something next week, etc. And as you will remember, this refers to a fixed arrangement for the future. For example, Dan has invited me out for dinner and I've accepted his invitation. We have a date. So, you should say, I'm having dinner with Dan tonight. OK, moving on to the next future tense. Future continuous. I will be doing, we will be doing, etc. As you will remember, there are also two usages for this tense. The main one refers to an action in progress at a specific time in the future. It's the equivalent of the present continuous tense or the past continuous tense. For example, will you be home at nine o'clock tonight? Let's look at the timeline. No, I will be having dinner with Dan at that time. The second usage of the future continuous tense was replacing the going to form for the future or the be doing form for the future. For example, are you going to pay for the meal? Yes, I will be paying because he paid last time. In this example, the future continuous tense will be paying has replaced the going to pay. Which restaurant are you going to? We will be going to the Mexican restaurant. In this example, the future continuous will be going has replaced the present continuous for a future arrangement are going. 
Right then, moving on to the next future tense, future perfect. I will have done, we will have done, etc. As you know, this refers to an action that will be completed in the future, either before a specific moment or before another action takes place. Let's look at the timeline. We will have left the restaurant by midnight. And finally, future perfect continues. I will have been doing, we will have been doing, etc. As you will remember, this is an action that will have started, will have continued for some time, and will still be in progress in the future. Either before a specific moment or before another action takes place. Let's look at the timeline. We will have been drinking for a few hours by the time we leave. Right, this brings us to the end of the revision lesson. We have prepared a video with exercises on mixed tenses for you. All you need to do now is to click on this image to go and do the exercises. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Bye now.